What's up everybody? So today, as you can see, we're going to be going over a lot of the stuff in my room that is Vietnam related, World War II related, and even modern related stuff. There's plenty of it. My room is turning into a museum, so to say. And yeah, it's just overflowing with stuff. <laughs> so yeah love to jump right into it and uh, show you guys some of my impressions or all of my impressions now my favorite way to tie these is you just wrap tightly around and make the first step of the tie the shoe and you take the slack you wrap it around It's very fast, it's very easy as you saw, it just took me 10 seconds to do more food. I'm ready for control. So it's very fast, especially if you have speed laces and my jump boots like I do. Looks nice, it's very comfortable, very flexible, but it only works if you don't knot your boots all the way up like I do. So faster way or close up I'll do that. Pull these, wrap them around, do the first loop, then take the slack, go underneath, around, around about three or four times, whatever you need, and do it to the other side. And you're good, GI. around 67 to like 70s uh, we're gonna use stuff like dog tags This is my standard impression as of now. I'm using an AK 47. This is the only gun I have. I am 16. further on some of the things that you can carry in your kit. Dip cans. I don't have a cigarette, uh, a carton of cigarettes, but uh, I used to. I don't know. You can also have some soap. It's good to stay clean of the deals when you're out there for a few days. And then, um, another thing, especially if you're a squad leader, you're going to need maps. Always have a map of the AO where you're operating. Stick it folded up in a compass pouch, but I think the breast pocket works pretty nicely for that. Bandolier would work okay for it. Even an ammo pouch could fit in there. There's many places you can stuff your stuff. <laughs> stuff your stuff. Um, and if you really wanted to dive further, you could get like personal little flags. Uh, I also have Viet Cong ones. I'll show you if they're stuffed in the crate. 
So this is roughly, uh, you could also have some Playboy material if that's on deck. Uh, but yeah, there's roughly just, you know, an NVA flag, um, some stuff. But uh, yeah, on to the next uh, impressions. Before I jump into the next impression, uh, there's also the boonie load up. very short uh, because I kind of like them short. You don't have to, but a lot of the ones that I've seen, they were trimmed pretty shortly. So, yeah. Okay, so on to my interesting impressions, such as Mac Pesag and uh, LR. Dog operators, CIA, uh, armies, some guns, anybody who was, you know, in a different tier than infantry or regular food from some ground type soldiers like legs, you know, anybody who was special would probably get Tiger Stripes early on in the war, such as 67, 68, and then uh, they were further on used to the end. And lastly, for the <coughs> Tiger of Depression, is actually not lastly, there's one more, but uh, is the full Tiger set with the boonie. Uh, this boonie's not cut as short, but it's still cut short. Also, another Vietnam like length that was used a lot. And then lastly, this would be the one. Okay, now on to my final, the best, and my favorite, of course, my ER gills. Just the only original Vietnam uniform that I have. All the other stuff is repro. Um, I picked these up for a decent price. 70 bucks for the jacket, 50 bucks for the pants. They're in pretty good condition. Uh, there's no holes in the jacket, and there's three tiny tears in the pants on the ass and the crotch one on the leg. Uh, yeah, they're pretty mean, you know, for your gills. Coloring's nice still. Uh, actually, I did, uh, I'm wrong about that. It's not my only original uniform, because I do have the other color, your gill pants, but they're small, and they're completely, like, they're pretty beat up, so. So to say, they're not really wearable anymore. Keep them in a fine condition that they are in, and I just kind of fold them up and keep them as a wall display. It's the best thing for them. Even these ER deals that I'm wearing, I don't drag through the dirt, I don't bleed on these. I wear these around like kicking around base, or like if you're going on a light recon patrol where you're just gonna walk around the bushes, lay down, no fucking jumping, taking cover, then. Yeah, I'll throw these on, but for the most part, I'll stick to Tiger Stripes or OG Greens because I don't like ruining original uniforms. I know some reenactors, they don't care, but other reenactors, they do. Other reenactors are even worse, but they won't even use their stuff or wear it, really. But I do wear these, I do reenact them, and yeah, I'll show you the full kit with these ones.
Okay, so this is full kit with the ERDLs. Unfortunately, I do not have an ERDL boonie. I will probably pick one up sometime in the future. But as of right now, this summer, all I could afford was stuff like this foot locker, these ERDLs, like uh, weapons crate, ammunition crate, stuff like that. Like, not very much. I bought a shit ton of sandbags. So this is really what I got to work with for this summer. This boonie and these ERDLs were bought. <coughs> this foot locker. It's, it's coming for this summer. But, uh, yeah. <coughs> I think the green booty looks pretty good with the ERDLs. It's a nice solid look. Same with control cover, control cap. But, yeah. And then, of course, I'll show you one of the cooler looks. One of my favorite things to do with Vietnam's camo is mix matching, like ERDL and Tiger, or with OD Green. It's such a cool look for me. I do it with the uniforms too. I just didn't want to record all those variations because it's a lot. Just doing these <coughs> are a lot. I have a lot of impressions, as you'll see through later videos. So, as of right now, we're just going to do Vietnam and the basics, you know, all together. But I do mix match my camo. Like, I'll wear ERDL top with the tiger bottoms or OD bottoms, OD top, same thing. My favorite is probably camo bottoms with an OD top. That's the cleanest, sharpest look. I know a lot of people will agree on that too. So, um, yeah, this is with the Tiger Booty. Like that look. That gets pretty neat. Um, yeah. Okay, so before I walk out in front and show you guys the ERDL look with the helmet, um, I'm just going to go over my helmet, really. I don't have a very accurate helmet like inner liner but it's a um, my helmet cover and my helmet shell itself are actually pretty decent and I've gotten some compliments on it so as you can see here it looks like some flint like my helmet cover has been burned up a little bit that's because well you know I've had fireworks come pretty close reenacting or like you know just to simulate like a um, rocket blast or like flames sparks whatever I kind of lit my helmet cover on fire a little in the front to look like if I was like you know looking up and then like took cover a little bit but like my helmet was still poking out like the, the sparks would have got my helmet cover but yeah just some small details to you know this isn't actually from a firework that would be insanely dangerous but no, like, they've come close, so I, like, you know, after that, I was like, oh, I could just simulate, like, I've had back blast, not back blast, like, some blast radius from a fucking coal or something, you know? But, yeah, it's just a nice little touch-up to the helmet, like, on the brim right there, and then right there. Not too much, just a little bit. Just a little darkening to the helmet cover. And then, on the side, I wrote 68-7, indicating um, this helmet cover, like... <clears throat> could be used from like 68 to like the 70s because he doesn't really know what year he's gonna make it to it could be 70 72 you know what i mean so that's kind of neat that i went with that thought of it and then right here of course i have my religious belief just a simple little cross and then a little calendar for the grenade pin thought that was neat you know just throw it in there it looks nice and then usmc right on the back and then just a bullet on the side drawn on. Could be a nickname, could be, you know, a bunch of things. But yeah, I know I've gotten a couple compliments on my helmet graffiti because it's, it's a little bit, you know, there's a lot on there, but it's like, it's not really too far be, I don't think. Uh, I think it's kind of accurate. I think it might say a lot about the character that I portray for Nam, you know? So, yeah. is the look with the helmet. I think this is a really nice look personally. It's cool, stylish. ERDLs ERD look sexier than anything. Uh, yeah. Okay, so this is my r and look. Or, you know, this is what I wear going to events. This is kind of what I wear day to day. Not white t-shirts, obviously. Sometimes I wear bandanas or whatnot, but, you know, I wear like 80s and 70s metal shirts, and it's kind of, you know, just who I am, fucking. But yeah, no, this is what I wear to my showing up to events or leaving events. This is an R&R &R impression. Uh, I also have a Hawaiian shirt that goes with it, you know, fucking basic stuff. 
I also have a little bit of a different R and R impression or CIA impression that I'll show you in a second. Like covert, not covert, so to say, but like no problem. Now this is something you might have probably seen or would have seen in like huge way city or Saigon, you know, with like people who were also like wearing shirts like these, like just dressed casually. Or um, fucking like CIA dudes or you know, anybody that would be working with the government or for the government as an operator, so to say. But then like they'd be wearing average clothes, but if something like, kicked off they would probably like rush to their kit and say if they didn't have time to change the camis, you might have you might have seen some impressions like this, you know, or with this shirt. That's what I'm gonna say. Okay, so this is the other way. This is kind of a nice new impression. Um, this is like for, this is more like CIA with the shirt, you know, would have been buttoned all the way up, tucked in. R&R um, &R would have been more like a white t-shirt, green t-shirt, or Hawaiian shirt, something like that, just casual. But this is pretty casual combat, I think, you know, for, you know, you might have seen this at like Pet Offensive. Or, you know, just anywhere where shit hit the fan really quickly and operators had to quickly get their stuff on and go, you know, similar to Benghazi or something like that where, you know, we didn't, we don't have as much pictures like we did back then, so you don't really know what actually, or you don't know as much that was worn or authorized or whatever, or even if it was unauthorized in a time of crisis, they might have done it anyway, but you don't know. So, um, I wouldn't wear this as an impression, but like, if you're pretending to be on R&R, &R, going to a reenactment or something, then it might not be like weird for you to walk in dressed like this and then change into a candy too. Okay, well, that kind of wraps it up for uh, Vietnam, so I'll show you the Foot Locker again quickly. Um, I have M36 straps in here. Just, yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, this is pretty accurate relatively for stuff, you know. Uh, I have some of my grandfather's stuff here, pictures that he took in Vietnam. Uh, LZs. Him with an M14. Here's an RTO, actually. It's funny, because my first reenactment, I was made an RTO without even knowing he was an RTO at the time. There's my pack that I don't really, uh, that I didn't put on for this because it's hung up on the wall and I didn't feel like taking everything down. But uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the uh, Vietnam corner. There's a lot of cool shit. And uh, yeah, time to clean all this stuff up and uh, put it back. <laughs>